was a Muslim. He don't shoot Muslims, he shoot Jews. And he, he tried to kill artists. On Saturday, February the 14th, a gunman opened fire on a cafe in Copenhagen, killing one man and injuring three policemen before fleeing from the scene. The cafe was hosting a debate on free speech. The event was attended by Lars Vilks, controversial cartoonist, famous for his drawings of the Prophet Muhammad. At 1 a.m., the shooter reappeared, killing a Jewish volunteer guard outside a synagogue. After a citywide manhunt, a gunman was located and shot dead by police. He was identified as Omar Abdul Hamid Al Hussein, a 22 year old Muslim man who has just been released from prison. Vice News arrived in Copenhagen to see how Denmark would respond to the attack. Kritik af islam, og især af Mohammed, skal ifølge islamisk sharia derfor straffes med døden. Det kan enhver læse i Koranen og haditterne. So we've just arrived at this Pegida rally. It's a spin-off of the German party, which is anti-immigration and against the Islamification of Europe. <laughs> do you think Islam poses a threat to Denmark? I sure, yes, I do. Yes. And they say they say it themselves. They don't like us, and they want to revenge our drawings of the Prophet Muhammad. Do you think people are scared? Yes, I think they are. So they're singing this song, Surrounded by Enemies, which is a song that was sung during the Second World War. It's said that they're now singing about the supposed Islamic occupation of Denmark. So I understand you were at the event that was shot at on Saturday. Yeah, I was inside there, so, and then suddenly I heard it. Uh, uh, dunk, 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 dunk. And then the people uh, get down to the floor. And, then we understand, yeah, yeah, it's something who, it's somebody who's shooting with a machine gun or something like that. So. Do you think Islam is a threat? <laughs> if they're shooting people, that's a threat, I think. It was a Muslim, uh, he shoot, he don't shoot Muslims, he shoot Jews, and he, he shoot, uh, trying to kill artists. We're in the city centre of Copenhagen, we're going to a synagogue where a gunman opened fire in the early hours of Sunday morning, killing one member of the community. People are here paying tribute and laying thousands and thousands of flowers in memorial for him. And how are you feeling after what happened this weekend? I'm really um, afraid that this will mean a loss of love and that it will foster more hatred. And that's actually why I'm crying. I was just standing there and I was just feeling so sorry for me. those people that, because it generates so much hatred. For me, this is, has nothing to do with freedom of speech. This has something to do with love. And I'm really afraid the way that this can be used in a kind of a political context. It's a wrong way to see this because Come on, this is just about fucking maniac who has killed some people. Would you say there was any signs of that before this? Yeah, it's been an ongoing process like the past 10 years. You see the, how many voters the right-wing parties they get all over Europe. It's a tendency and this just makes it worse. As a result of the attack, leaders of Denmark's small Jewish community held a press conference. We advise that there should be police at the synagogue when there is a service or, or whether there is a, a, a large gathering in the community centre. We are not France. We don't have five, seven hundred Jewish institutions. We have one synagogue and one school. I'm not saying that we are asking for uh, army, military, as we've seen uh, uh, in France. Uh, uh, I, I don't like those pictures. Nobody likes 
that situation. I, I want to stress that the Danish Jewish community has a quite good relation with the Muslim organizations in Denmark. What we uh, fight together is extremism and uh, radicalism. What are your thoughts on Benjamin Netanyahu's call for European Jews to move to Israel? At, at this point, we, we, we consider ourselves as Danish uh, citizens. We are well integrated. There has been Jews in Denmark for three, four hundred years. The Prime Minister Netanyahu knows uh, more than anyone else that you should never give up to terror. So uh, if there was a time, now is not the time. Why do you think the synagogue was targeted? He uh, was influenced by uh, what happened in Paris. He took the same ideas. First to the caricaturist, then the Jews. Terrible things happened, but Europe is not on fire. It's not the 30s now, and it's not uh, the pogroms, and uh, uh, we should take things in uh, proportions, and we shouldn't do things out of fear. We're on our way to Norbu to meet Yunus Koch. He's a spokesperson for Hezbollah Tahrir here in Denmark. It's an organization which seeks to establish an Islamic caliphate globally. He's agreed to meet us in the area where the suspect was shot on Sunday, which is predominantly an immigrant area. In light of recent events, I mean, what's, what's your stance on it? We consider it as, or at least the way it has been portrayed by politicians and the media at large, as being uh, insincere. Instead of asking questions about how did you know, some sentiments arise within a young person and, and these kind of things. And it seems that nobody's really interested in asking these type of questions or getting to the root cause of the problems. Would you say before this there was any sort of anti-Muslim sentiment or has this been building up or...? There has been an increasing Islamophobia which has been driven uh, by, primarily by politicians and it has been, you know, uh, spread widely by uncritical media. They're creating a, a ghost that does not exist by presenting a narrative that says that all Muslims and Islam per se is violent and therefore a threat towards the Western populations. And if you are anti-democratic, uh, anti then per se you are in a category where you pose a threat. All these things, when you, you interfere in how Muslims uh, raise their children, you interfere in their daily lives, you do all these things under the pretext of security, national security. When you push people that far, sometimes you will have a, a reaction. And sometimes undignified actions, they get undignified reactions. These shootings have come 10 years after a Danish newspaper published 12 cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad, kicking off deadly protests across the Arab world. Today, Danish intelligence worries that Muslim communities at home are radicalizing. We went to meet the former head of Danish intelligence to ask about the broader security implications of the attack. Denmark uh, has for years been threatened a lot due to the original Mohammed drawings. But of course, uh, everybody has suspected that something would happen after, especially Charlie Hebdo. With this particular man, there's nothing that indicates he's been in Syria. But he could have been in contact with uh, radicalizers from either Al-Qaeda or Islamic State. Between the two attacks, he posted, in fact, on the internet uh, an Islamic State um, video, kind of statement. So he's been influenced somehow uh, by this uh, religious ideologies. But do you think it's part of a growing trend in Europe and Denmark? I think we see, uh, again, a rise in the will to hit Western Europe. And there are several reasons for this. The mocking of the Prophet is one thing. The other thing is that the Islamic State has also said to their followers, hit targets in all the coalition countries. And don't do it very complicated, do it simple. Uh, simple means, simple weapons, so you go under the radar of the security services. Uh, the majority of the Danish Muslims, they are very loyal to Denmark. Uh, they are a um, small minority um, of uh, young Muslims um, who could be radicalized to be seen that. And one of the problems to make people understand is, of course, because you have a radical um, way of thinking, that doesn't mean that the security service should surveil you around the clock. So we've just arrived at the memorial rally and there's a massive mix of people. You've got families here, you've got younger people. The security here is really on top of it as well. We've got helicopters overhead and tons and tons of police here to secure the area. 
I can see you're here with your friends flying your Kurdish flag. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from uh, Sheikhan, north of Mosul. Okay, and how long have you lived in Denmark for? Uh, for 20 years. What do you think about the recent events that happened here? Um, well, I think I'm, I'm actually I'm, I'm shocked about that uh, this kind uh, I have heard of uh, happening uh, in Mosul, also happening in, in, in Denmark. I, I, I have many friends in northern Iraq where families have been killed uh, uh, by, by ISIS. Me and my family, we are escaped from uh, those kind of troubles. But now we have, we have also to, to think about we are meeting the, the same guys here in Denmark. Why do you think it happened in Denmark? I think it could happen anywhere, really. In America, we just saw three people get murdered, you know, three Muslim people get murdered, and it happens all over the world now. Freedom of speech is like, it's like freedom. It's, it's up to each individual to, to use it and to have this freedom. But with freedom, there also comes a responsibility. And this responsibility is also to have some respect. And I'm not saying that with this and Paris and everything that, okay, they shouldn't have drawn these characters. Of course, you're entitled to it. I just mean that what it comes to here is, is just terrible. It's 13 billion years of evolution, and this is how we choose to, to live with that? No, it's not okay.